Welcome back Gundam guys and Gundam gals. Patrick Grade here from gginfinitenews.com. This time I'm bringing you the early video review for the HGUC RMS 179 GM2. That's a lot of abbreviations. Here is the box. Here are the empty plates. And here's a look at the kit. So let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Uh, with the feet and legs here, we can see that the GM2 has a very minimalist design, very clean lines, large uh, basic shapes with a few pendant lines here and there. So at the knee we got a single bend here that gives us a little over 90 degrees. Nothing too fancy, but it works. With ankle we have a fair amount of swivel and side to side movement and the typical flip-flop action of the feet here with the poly cap in the toe. Uh, there's no break or anything on the foot itself so it's a solid piece. At the hip we get a fair amount of swivel here without too much resistance but there's a little bit when you get to the extreme range. Here's the very plain waist armor. Uh, literally several slabs of white plastic on the front for the front skirts. The side skirts are fairly simple as well, but they have a fair amount of movement and they're in there pretty solidly, so they're not, they're not going to come out anytime soon. And for the back skirt, it's a simple chunk of plastic, nothing moving, no, no panel lines, nothing fancy. So here's a look at the chest unit. You may be able to tell that I've panel lined this kit using some Gundam Real Touch markers and even a mechanical pencil. It helps bring out some of the detail in the yellow pieces as well as the panel lines. So this is a pretty simple chest unit. Uh, no moving parts, no opening hatches or anything. Just a bunch of red outlined by some yellow and gray. It looks pretty nice. And there's also a aquamarine sticker up here in the camera area as well as a sticker surrounding the neck for some reason and here are the ports for the backpack and here's the backpack uh, again it's real simple just uh, some gray plastic pen aligned with the black marker uh, thrusters that don't move anywhere the aquamarine sticker here for a camera and this is where you plug in the beam saber handle on the opposite side you can see quite a bit of open plastic but that's all covered up by the torso and chest unit so not a big deal there at all. So here's a look at the arm and shoulder. For the elbow a bend we get about a little over 120 or so degrees bend. Um, rotation below the shoulder. The shoulder arm itself is very plain with just a small area here for channel lining and some more and another deep channel here on the side if you wanted to paint that as well and same stuff on the back here is the port for the shield arm to plug into and we have a couple shallow areas for channel lining on either side of the wrist So very uh, minimal design, form follows function here on this kit. So here's a look at the head unit. Pretty nondescript other than the large clear green sensor array here. Very grunt suit looking. A couple stickers used for the cameras on the front and back. And a communication antenna on the side here. Real simple but it looks nice. So for accessories we get two semi-closed fist manipulators to hold on to the beam saber handle. We have a trigger finger hand holding on to the pretty basic beam rifle here. The rifle is simple but it has some nice deep channel lines for lining opportunities. We get a pretty basic beam saber handle here with a clear yellow beam saber blade. And finally we get a nice looking shield 
with the standard Gundam design with the big yellow cross, big chunk of red plastic, and white. And on the back we have a lot of the channel lines that we usually see for the shield pieces. And to attach the shield to the arm, we use this attachment piece here. It has two options, either on the side of the arm or on the back of the arm, depending on your preference. So plug either leg into the hip joint here. Then attach that to the poly cap at the bottom of the skirt. And we have the lower body with a poly cap for the waist joint. Plug the upper torso in there. The backpack goes on the back. And then plug either arm unit into each shoulder. And I'll form the head. And here's a quick look at the fully assembled kit. At first glance, it looks real simple, of course, based off of the anime design. Nothing too fancy. The red stands out pretty well, uh, contrasting against the white. And we have a little bit of gray here to break up the monotony of the white and red. And the yellow on the chest, I believe, is pretty vibrant, so it kind of sticks out. So let's also plug in the rifle and trigger finger hand, as well as the opposite open fist. Put the shield arm, attach the shield arm to the back of his left arm and plug in the shield. And then put the beam saber handle in its place. So here's a look at the fully assembled mobile suit with most of his accessories equipped. I really like the clean design. Even though there's not a lot going on, I think what is there looks pretty nice. It's very straight and sturdy looking. And I think the quick job of panel, panel lining that I did helped bring some detail out. And there's more options there if you wanted to paint some of the hoses back here silver or you know do some shading or something you could really make it look nice but i think overall it looks pretty cool so let's go over articulation real quick take off some of the accessories bringing the front skirts up allow us to bring the legs legs forward about that far with a little over or about 90 degrees for the bend there. And we see we have a decent amount of foot swivel as well as the flip-flop action of the feet. So turning the torso a little bit more than 20 degrees or so will make it pop off. Um, the side skirts are blocked quite a bit by the torso so they can't come up that far and the legs can go out about that far. For the shoulders full 360 movement there. That's about the extent of the upward reaching. Here's a bicep curl. And the shoulders can pop out a small amount. The head can go side to side about that far before it runs into its neck armor. But kind of a cool thing is you can almost get a little bit of bending. You can get the arm to hang on to the beam saber handle in the backpack there. So that's kind of cool. And that's about as wide of a stance as you can get. But it definitely stands pretty solidly. It's not any danger of falling over or anything. So that's kind of nice. So as we watch the GM2 spin around here, I want to go over a couple things. The kit is very simple. Uh, you know, it's $15 or so, maybe a little bit more US. You get four or five plates, uh, you know, three different colors, 
primary colors, and that's about it. You get two weapons and a shield and a backpack and a clear piece of plastic. So it's it's a real simple kit. It's real f easy to build. I put it together in about an hour or so, I think, cutting and cleaning and even, you know, the assembly, not much more than an hour, if that. So for what it is, for a representation of the GM2, it's a, uh, a great kit. You know, a lot of the GMs are built the exact same way, or pretty much the same way over the years. This is about the 10th or 11th, at least, high-grade GM version we get, even though it's the first version of the GM2. Uh, going back and looking at the instruction booklets for from the old GMs, it's all pretty much the same as far as assembly goes. So it's nothing too new, but I think for what it is, it's nice. Um, if you want a squad of GMs, you know, Zeta GM2s from the Zeta series, for 30 45 bucks you can get three of them and have a neat little diorama going on and if you take the time to paint it and uh you know add some customization to it you'd have a neat little diorama so it's it's quick it's a quick build it's an easy build nothing nothing too fancy but just all all of it's very adequate and very very appropriate for the source material. It looks just like it did in the screen, you know, from the Zeta series, except for it's not exploding for some reason. And, uh, you know, for a grunt suit, it's pretty darn good. So I'd recommend this to anybody who's a fan of grunt suits, who's a fan of the GM2 design or GM design in general, or just wants another kit to go along with their Zeta, you know, the Mark II and the Methus and all that, you know, cool Zeta designs. This will go go along well with those guys. So in conclusion, I want to thank you guys for watching another video review by me, Patrick Greed. I appreciate all the subscriptions and the comments and recommendations and, you know, criticisms. They all go to help me make a better review. So please take the time to comment if you'd like and uh, subscribe if you haven't. So from all of us at ggfinitenews.com and gundamguy.blogspot.com, I want to thank you for watching. And uh, coming up soon, I'll have finally that review for the Metal Build Sylvan Sword. I also have a Gafran, an AG Genoase, a Gundam Mage 1. I have some Revel Techs to go over. And that's about it for now. So stay tuned. And check out uh, ggfinitenews.com for the written review and pictorial review of this kit. As well as others by Fall Dog, Josie Barra, and some figure reviews by Figure Guy, I believe. So just check out our site, and uh, thanks a lot.